The next stop is on the radar radio. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Yeah. Yes, sir, baby, on the radar radio. Yo, special guest in the building. Man, this one is uh, three years in the making, the one, the only, <laughs> worldwide, ASAP 12 in the building. My well, brother Gabe. It's hard to track you down nowadays. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, because you was in Japan. Yes, I was. Was that, on, was that tour or that was just... Uh, that was kind of like for leisure. Okay. You know, the past couple months, I spent about a good month in Asia. I had two weeks in... Um, September, two weeks in Japan, and then I did like a week and a half in China, went to Taiwan. Also, when I was in uh, Japan, I went to like South Korea, mm. so then I came back, you know, went to Germany, went to a few different places, then I came back for a little while, then went back to uh, Japan. Oh, so you've really been on your world travel trip lately. For a while, bro, you know. You know, it's interesting because like when I speak to a lot of artists, um, whether they're from New York or in, in a lot of respects, like the UK too, because I feel like they also on that type of time, where it's like they were really... Like when the, their come up was during like the, you know, the 2010s, like the mid to late 2010s. Right. And then now that we in 2023, 2024, a lot of what I noticed that, you know, you're doing or like someone from the UK, like AJ Tracy is doing or Dino, like a lot of y'all are in this space now where it's like, I'm going to go live my life. Like I'm going to do the music too, but mm -hmm. like you're actually going out and enjoying life now and, you know, and actually just having fun with this shit. Yeah, because they didn't teach us how to enjoy ourselves with music or you know live your life you know what i'm saying like they just be like yo get on stage song and dance yo do this that and the third yeah. so then when you really see the world and you really get to experience different cultures different food different like fashion different like knowledge culture wisdom yeah. you just want to keep doing it you know like i went to japan twice last year you know some people never been to japan like once in their life you feel me so I don't only just do it for me. I do it to inspire everybody else. Like, yeah. yo, let's get up. Let's get out. Let's use your passport. It's it's hard as hell to get a passport. It's easier to catch a case than get a passport, bro. Mm. And then once you catch a case, you can't get your passport, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, You feel yeah. me? So, yo, go get your passport. Go live your life, man. If you pull up to anywhere in the world, tell them 12 you sent you. You feel that, me? That's a fact. You know, it's funny because you said that, like, they didn't teach you to do this, right? They didn't teach and I you. feel like when you're an artist and you have so much eyes on you, and especially if you're part of such an influential time in, in, the, in music, like, you know, like with the crews in the early 2010s to mid 2010s with like Pro Era, Beast Coast, ASAP mm -hmm. Mob, like, there's so many eyes on you and there's so many things happening within, like, happening so fast that one you don't get to like live that part of your life but then also you know they're just telling you to go here go here perform here do music here mm -hmm. you also don't get to learn and i know you spoke about it like here and there but like learn about the business side of things and how to like make sure that that shit is also situated um as you come up too but then like you know eventually you like you you learn about that stuff and i know you said that you've learned about it but like you learn about it through like a lot of trials and errors because they didn't teach you that off the rip yeah. too i had to learn by failing and, and with those failures, you, you learn to enjoy the experience mm -hmm. and then you're eager to learn. Like I had to read books like everything you need to know about the music industry, rhythm and black business. I had to be signed to Sony and drop an album and see things slow up to be like, OK, this is not for me. I had to learn so many dimensions mm -hmm. of the music industry before I could even enjoy myself because I was so young. With my brothers, you know, touring the world, doing what we was doing, but we wasn't really like taking the time to learn, you know what I'm saying? Right. And that shit could, it could bite you on your ass, you know what I'm saying? You feel me? Like, you could be on a major for six, seven years and only drop one album, and then you owe them like six or seven albums, you feel yeah. me? So it's like, for a young kid, like, who's going to teach them that? You know what I'm saying? Mm. You just so hyped that you got this opportunity that you don't care about nothing else. Mm. But then when everything stops and the pandemic starts and you notice like, damn, like, shit not really right. You're so used to living on the road that your regular life is not right. You know, your body not right, your mental not right, you feel me? So music is like, it's a double-edged sword. Like, I love it to death, but it just took so much from me, you know what I'm saying? Like, my family getting older, my parents, my mm -hmm. little cousins, this, that, and the third, I'm missing things, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I had to really take a step back and be like, nah, I want to enjoy my life. I want to I wanna go to my, my Thanksgiving, my Christmas. I want to I wanna be able to go to Kingdom, 
You know, I want to yeah. go to Mill Bank. You know, I want to go to City Island. You feel me? And not be worried about looking, you know, over my back. You feel me? Nah, talk about going to City Island, and that's that's. I felt I felt. You, you feel me? You want to go to City Island in the summertime? Yeah. Absolutely. Like we got a couple dollars. We want to go to City Island. We want to have fun. We want to go to Fordham Road. We want to do everything. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We want to go to LA. We want to go to London. We go to yeah. Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? But then once you're a hip hop musician or superstar. <laughs> kind of get pretentious and like yo I'm too good to do this and that and the third you feel me but it's, it shouldn't be like that was there a moment that because that's kind of like an ego check you mm -hmm. feel me it's like oh I gotta check myself for what I'm was what was like the ego check moment for you when you had to like check your ego and be like oh shit like I gotta stop acting like this really? if there was a moment for you um to be honest bro I never really had like a big ego you know because I'm running around ASAP Mall. I'm running around with Flacco. I'm running around with yeah, Fur, yeah, yeah, yeah. Naz, Addy, like Tawa, everybody. Like, you know, so I'm the one. I didn't have an ego. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. I'm sh we all from the streets, but like, I'm, I'm from the projects. You know what I'm saying? I grew yeah. up in the projects. There's no room for error or ego in the projects. You know, an ego could get you killed and an right. error could get you killed. So those two E's I kind of stayed away from and just brought more execution into my life. You mm. dig? But yeah, like, I ain't really never have an ego, you know? And... It could hurt because it's like you're supposed to want to be a star. You're supposed to want to be like that person all the time. You know what I'm saying? But I just didn't want to be that. I just wanted to be a human being. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now that everybody else in my collective got the little light, oh, it's my turn. Let me be the star <laughs> now. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Do you feel like that's where like the kids got it? Like all the stuff that we just talked about, like kids got to eat, right? Um, project out now, deluxe out now. Go check that out. Thank you. Uh, dope project, which I'm, we're gonna get a little bit more into it, but. Do you feel like all the things that you and I just talked about, whether it be like the living your life, learning the business, like how did how does all that stuff kind of manifest or kind of end up turning into this project? Because I feel like this project is like, of course, like you know, we say that we can say this with every project. It's the most mature project that we got from X, Y, and Z artists. But mm -hmm. like this is a very mature project for you, um, mm -hmm. and also definitely like I feel like the most features that you've had on a body of work. Most features ever. Um, but what what was what went into this project? Like what was like the intent for you, and how did like how that all those other life experiences like turn into this body of work too? So you know, like I'm gonna just be totally transparent. In this album process, I almost lost my life. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So. Do some other shit, but another situation I almost lost my life was like COVID. Like COVID made me real sick. You feel me? Mm. So from there, the day I caught COVID, I was like in the studio. But the last song I recorded was Kids Gotta Eat. Yeah. So once I recovered from COVID, I listened to Kids Gotta Eat. And I was like, yo, damn, I never sound like this before. I never felt like this before. I never been this type of artist. You know what I'm saying? Something is totally different about right. me. I need to cherish my life more. I need to cherish my art more. And that's what it really was. Like, I got experiences in life that people were like, they'll die for. You know what I'm saying? Why am I not living? Why am I not enjoying this? Why am I not showing the people that, yo, you could do it too? You feel me? Mm -hmm. And that's what really brought me into like, kids got to eat. KGE, kinetic growth and environment. Mm -hmm. I had to show that I was bigger than when I was. I'm not the same person. I'm not I'm not the same ASAP 12 that used to be Flacco Hype Man. Right. I'm not the same ASAP 12 that used to be features on the track. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm ASAP 12 This is my boat. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it was just me just really cherishing life and almost losing it. Like living in the street, doing all type of dumb shit, you feel me? With a couple dollars. And then you right, notice yeah. like, yo, why you why are you even taking these type of risks? You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I had to really understand, like, yo, God got a plan for me. And if I stay on track, I could get everything. And the past year and a half, I've had more blessings coming in my life than the first half of my career. And it's mm. crazy. Mm. It's do, you, really crazy. do you just feel like it's based off the way that you've been moving now, too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's because how I'm moving. And plus, the music is truly fire. Yeah. I shot more videos than I ever shot in my life. Mm. You see me more. I'm here with you. This was like three years in the making. I had to... Get my memory right for three years. I had to get my whole everything aligned. I had to go to Japan to get this fucking Biggie. This yeah. Biggie is not in America. This Biggie is set a guy in Tokyo. Oh, I mean Japan. You feel me? So I had to really go around the world to find myself. Mm. And then I found myself. Now you found me right here in this seat, the that, driver's seat. That's fire, bro. You know, with the project, like I said, there's like a lot of features on here. I'm, I'm not gonna run down everybody, but a few notable ones. I like the rock, the rock one. Yes. Uh, Jay Worthy, yes. SG Batman, which SG Batman, is super SG Batman is. Super, super random feature on the project <laughs> off the rip. I'm not gonna lie. 
Um, obviously, you've worked with Lunchbox before, yes. but I think that's always an interesting dynamic because mm-hmm. Lunchbox is a very different type of artist as well, too. Mm-hmm. Annalise Zadian, definitely one of like the most underrated singers in yes. the city. I love her. Uh, Rome Streets, and then of course, you know, we got we got ASAP Mob on that shit too, and then yes. we got Kwani on there. You got you know Kwani, super dope, man. That's a fact. And your yeah, man, though, uh, Hoodfly Mike. Hoodfly Mike, good Hoodfly Mike, yeah, you yeah, feel yeah. me? Yeah, yeah. Words of Hoodfly. Everybody, you know, if people don't know, the step in, step out, don't get stepped on, that came from Hoodfly Mike. Shout out to Hoodfly Mike. I ain't even know that, you feel me? But I know yeah. Hoodfly Mike. That's a that's a fly young dude. He really get to it. He, he like the epitome of kids got to eat, you feel me? Mm. Youngin, doing his thug dizzle, getting to it. The world know his name. Same thing with Lunchbox. Yeah. You know, Annalise, Zakari, mm. Zayna Mates. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, you feel me? But... I never had this many features on my project before, and I was kind of feeling like if I kept trying to do this for Dolo, yeah. nobody was going to show me love. So I had to reach out to other people that I also like. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I, I really like SG Batman music. Like I remember being in Flacco crib, Flacco listening to Lucky. I'm like, nah, listen to SG Batman. Then he look, he like, damn, this kid hard. I'm like, yo, bro, like he's he's different. Nice, yeah. You know? And how many people could bear the artist name of Batman? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you know that's one of my favorites. Lunchbox, like. Lunchbox is one of my favorites. He used yeah. to come to the crib in Brooklyn and not even work on music, just be there. Like we playing 2K or we just Word. just building. You know what I'm saying? We watching YouTube videos. Mm. We watching what's the joint where people um they tied to the joint, smacking the shit out of each other. We watching shit like, oh, like that. Oh, like the side boxing matches. Yeah, 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 we watching that. You know what I'm saying? We watching Dude Perfect. Mm. Dude Perfect is one of my favorite shows. I love Dude Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, love, I feel love like Dude Perfect, Perfect on the radar Perfect. would be a crazy collab. I don't know what the fuck we do with that though. I'm gonna let you think about it and you tell me and then and then we'll do we'll so figure it out. On the radar, you yeah. know how they be having the nerf guns. Yeah. You gotta freestyle while shooting the on the radar target. Who gonna do that? You 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 gonna do that? I, I do it, but it's a couple <laughs> cats I'm not even gonna name. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm, I'm gonna let you handle that. You okay, know okay, what okay, I'm okay, saying? Respectfully, that. respectfully. But yeah, shit fire. Fire. Yeah, I really man. Like I love like the Kwani song too. I feel like that was definitely one of the ones that was like my least expected from you. Mm. Cause it was just like I feel like Kwani, obviously well Kwani is like definitely like the newest out of most of the artists on the project mm-hmm. that I could think of. And he's also like being from Philly and also his his style, like the Philly drill, mm-hmm. um, Detroit shit is like definitely different than what i would expect from asap 12 to really be yeah jacking you know what i'm saying but it's like i'm one of the most eclectic artists in the world i could do some blood money rap shit strapped i could do that but then i could do hella hoes right you know then we could do feel so good coziest you know what i'm saying like then i could be in a snow allegra video or i could do a song with uh sam silver you know what i'm saying that's kind of like a like a house house joint you know what i'm saying so the thing with Kwani was like I'm in South Korea, and I'm walking around South Korea, and I walk into a temple. So as I walk into the temple, it's a statue, bro, that's huge. And I'm looking at the statue, and it's kind of like I'm meditating. And in the back, like, if you listen to um, Ten Quarters, it's like this chant. Uh, I hear the chant in the back. So I go into this little temple, and they praying. So I was like, hold on, let me me back up. I'm like, hold on, let me let me figure out how to like take this with me. So I turned my audio message on. Mm. I took the sound. So then we came back. My producer ran Van Dan. He working on a beat. Boom, he working on the beat. So I said, yo, add this sound. He added the sound. I started working on the song. He like, yo, bro, I ain't going to cap, bro. Kwani is sound crazy on this record. You feel me? So I'm like, I don't know Kwani, like personally, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like I got love for Philly. Shout out to Core. Shout out to Meek. Shout out to Uzi. Shout out to everybody. But I don't, I don't know Kwani, Kwani, you know what I'm that, saying? Yeah. So one thing led to another, bro got in touch with his management. I was in the studio with Kwani the next day. Word. You feel me? And Kwani showed mad love, you feel me? Like, and he bought his business. I could say that, like, that's the first person I ever had to do, like, business with a feature with. And it was cool. It was respectable. You know what I'm saying? He don't know me. I don't know him. And then it was just all love. He killed this shit. And he was solid. Sturdy, as Philly cats say. Word, Sturdy. man. Well, what's next for you? What's after this? What's after this? <clears throat> KGE World Tour, you know, I've been traveling a lot, mm-hmm. but like a world tour as far as shows, I have a Sony Music Hall headlining show, April 25th, you got to come, you I'm know there. what I'm saying? I'm there. Come through uh, Rome Streets, and we're looking for somebody else too, but so far me and Rome Streets is going to body that, I know it's going to sell out, this is like my biggest headlining show ever. And I can't wait, bro. Word. Well, I'm c- congrats on everything, bro. Well, thank you, bro. Uh, April 25th, get your tickets now. That's a fact. Um, headlining show, uh... Did you announce where the rest of the dates are too or not? Um, coming soon? Coming soon. You coming feel soon, me? Okay. Like, let's manifest it more. And sometimes when Real you quick. 
You know, when you yeah. tell too many people your blessings, they want to they wanna retract your blessings. But I know Gabe is a great dude, so I could tell Gabe whatever, you feel me? And dog, I appreciate you, and I can't wait to see you on your world tour. I want you to go to Australia. I want you to go to That's Tokyo. That's so crazy that he just said that, because I have a meeting tomorrow for OTR Australia, too. Yo, That's crazy. Bro, like, Australia is one of the best places ever. Yeah. You feel me? Like, it's paradise to me. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Especially, like, around this time, it's crazy. I manifest that we always spend our New Year's in Australia. There you go, man. Real quick, Calvin, come on, fast. Oh, fast. Calvin, my bro. This up. Come on. This is my bro right here. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Appreciate you, 12. Hey, uh, hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Cal's Questions. Um, my question for you today, 12, is, you know, all your times in the game, man, like the cozy tapes were such a crazy time. Yes. Uh, what was your favorite experience from recording all the cozy tapes and you know those that era? Um, I can't even single out one moment because every no. moment with those guys and it's still going on. Like you feel me? But I could say my favorite my favorite ASAP Mall moment ever. Just period. Was probably getting like finding Yams in uh, London once mm. it was after Wireless. Yams was Yams was having a great time, <laughs> so we piece, Yams, having a man. great time. I bring him back to the hotel, you know what I'm saying? So I go to the room. I'm about to slide over something. I get a Twitter message, and this is before people really on the internet doing things like that. I get a Twitter message like, "Yo, your brother uh, ASAP Yams is in a club." Like across town in London. Mind you, this is like before WhatsApp is popping, before iMessage is popping, before Uber is popping. I gotta find Yams in London with no air tag. So I ended up finding him. Like some girls ended up taking me to two clubs. We Yo. walking in and out of clubs. I, I walk in the third club. He in there with Luau Dang. Like, yo. So me, I'm like, yo, bro, get the fuck out of here. He said, nah, bro, pouring a bottle out. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yo, Fucking why is he said Yans with Luau Dang, man? But that was probably one of my like most fun moments because, you know, my bro not here no more. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And tomorrow is uh the 18th. It's Yams Day. It's Yams Day. You feel me? And we not doing Yams Day right now, but, you know, I just dropped the record Yams Day. So that's for my bro. You know, mm. I'm always love my nigga. He the reason why I'm sitting on this couch as far as like, you know, music wise, you know, if yeah. it wasn't for him, it would be no ASAP. You know what I'm saying? Facts. And that's how I'm rocking and rolling, bro. Long live Yams, man. Long live ASAP Yams. Long live ASAP Yams. Well, look, bro, I appreciate you being here. Uh, freestyle now by the time y'all see this. So go check that out before we get up out of here. And those you want to let the people know where they can follow you at, all that good stuff. Now's the time to do it with this camera on the right, right here. Yo, ASAP 12 you on Instagram, ASAP 12 you on TikTok, ASAP 12 you on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Kids got to eat out right now. And I better see y'all at that New York show, man. Gabe, you doing your motherfucking thing, bro. April 25th, man. Show on the way. Go run up that project. Go run up the freestyle. Go show them some love. Go show them some support. Love is free. Hey, Sports man. Free. But y'all already knew that. Till next time, ASAP 12, you on the radar. We out. Bow. My God. Bro. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it.